right, y'all. Welcome to session five. We're ready to get started. We got some folks in the room. And we got some folks outside of the camera shot, too. Um, and uh, we are uh, thinking today about hands and wrists. So we just... Um, uh, did a update on baby Noah, Valerie, and we are praying uh, for his health and strength and his uh, weight gain. We know we need to get him bigger and stronger, and um, thank you for all the love of the staff and all the folks taking care of baby Noah. Uh, and so, uh, uh, Lynette, we just wanted to um, let you know that hands and wrists, that's what we're thinking about today. So today, thankfully, you don't have to be necessarily in a chair or a mat to have the fun that we'll have. I'm going to send you the poses from the book. I started copying and my copier goes super slow at home, so I didn't get it all done. We're going to start off with this pose called the roly poly pose um, to take care of um, hands and um, when we get started on hands. So before we do that, I was just fixing to say uh, I want to read from the book and that's when I went, oops, I hadn't hit record. All right. So what I want you to kind of come to terms with, what is the difference from you of the unpleasant feeling of moving stiff joints, right? Versus the discomfort of straining a structure beyond its capacity, right? I love that phrase and I'm gonna read it again. What is the difference between helpful action of moving stiff joints, right? It hurts, but it hurts so good, if that makes sense. Like I know the stretch feels good, it's hurting, but it feels good to make the stretch happen. That's good, right? Or when is it a sharp pain or it's a big owl and that's when you are discomfort of straining a structure beyond its capacity. So that's when you've crossed the line. You've gone over an edge that you want to work on an edge, but you don't want to go over one. Does that make sense? So that's really important for you to begin to be comfortable in your own body noticing. This is hurting, but I need to do this. Right, this is hurting, but I've got to use this joint. I've got to keep it moving because with arthritis, the more we keep it moving, the motion is the lotion. Right, that's the phrase we want to remember: motion is lotion. So you want to keep it moving even when it doesn't feel so great. But that, and it's a discernment thing. You know, nobody can tell you. That's why I don't really like when um, yoga teachers do physical adjustments on people because I can press into your body and I can get you to make a move bigger than you're doing it. But is that really what your body needs? You need to know when it comes to that point of discomfort beyond the structure's capability, then you need to stop, right? So that's why you're always in charge of yourself. You always have permission to go, mm -mm, not for me today, right? Or, you know, to say, no, that's too much for me. That's too much. Because everybody's point of when it's too much is individual. And I I can't know that as, the, as your instructor or your therapist. You know that about yourself. But but likely, we don't know that about ourselves, right? You know, we're learning how to be in touch and in tune with ourselves. Does that make sense? All right. I hope it makes sense. Okay, so we would probably need one more um, space. Are y'all okay with your little cutting space there? Because I was thinking about the table. We'll leave your table to get Barry at least a little more space to work with. And um, we're going to sit up tall. And again, yeah, can we put this in front of Barry? Lisa, so they have more space. And then Lisa, I'll move your fun. You're welcome to take your Play-Doh. You're also welcome to leave it here if that's um, important for you, you know, okay. it's all good. Okay. Um, but you know, if you can keep it by the, um, if it works for you to have it by, oh, look, how'd you make a perfect cube? That's pretty cool. <laughs> you can keep it by the, um, you know, TV when you're watching the TV. Or, um, or you know, and I'm handing you the remote. Oh, and, well, we don't need it up on the big screen because we don't have one on the other end. Watch it. I was going to say we could turn on the TV so we could see it. All right. So we're going to sit up nice and tall, do some breathing, and then start with that digital roly poly. So feel the floor with your feet first. You're invited to close your eyes. You don't have to. You just can make a soft focus with your eyes. Um, if you don't feel safe ever closing your eyes, just do your thing. It's all good. But the crown of your head needs to be lifted like you're on fishing line, like some of Grandma Drucy's things here around us are hanging from the ceiling, right? So, so pretend you have fishing line pulling you up so that as you feel that lift, you start to lengthen through the cervical spine, the neck uh, bones here, which we'll hit in a couple of weeks. 
And then when you feel that lift, you might feel the whole backbone get a chance to be longer. <laughs> All right, pop quiz. When are you the tallest you're ever going to be? First thing in the morning, in the middle of the day, or when you go to bed at night? <laughs> Bed. First thing in the morning, bing, 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 bing. <laughs> and so the idea is when you lay down on your back or you're resting, everything just relaxes and lengthens and has space. When you get up in the morning and gravity starts to go to work on you, you're the longest and tallest you're ever going to be. And then as you go throughout a day, it gets shorter and <laughs> shorter because gravity pulling you down, right? So in the morning, you wake up with those jelly-filled donuts in between each of the vertebral disc, and you're nice and plump. Hot now. What is what Krispy Kreme says? Ready, hot and ready. Um, but then as you go through the day, it gets a day old kind of feeling. It gets skinny, stale, jelly donut. And so you want to do things like stretch and lift and twist and flex like we do with our young guy to keep the juices nice and plump. All right. And for the, the pushy part between your um, disc in the back there. All right. Now, hands can rest on your lap or wherever it feels comfy to you. And you're going to take a breath in. Then you take a breath out. You can let it out like a big heavy sigh or any way that sounds good to you. Big breath in and big breath out. By sitting up nice and tall, you've given as much space as possible to all the parts of you that are going to be involved in breathing. So big breath in and big breath out. All right, now you're going to fog up a mirror and you're going to squeeze the mis whisper muscles on the breath out. So breath in and breath out. Channel your inner Darth Vader if you're a Star Wars fan or go to the beach and hear the ocean in the shells. But make that sound as you squeeze your whisper muscles with your mouth open or closed. Big breath in and big breath out. One more breath in, and one more breath out. Last breath will be the horsey breath, all right, horsey lips. So you're going to breathe in, and then you're going to loosen the jaws and flap your lips with a... All right, big breath in, and a big breath out. <laughs> Uh, one more big breath in and one more big breath out. All right, all of the above are ways to take a deep breath. How you like that, Barry? Don't distract, don't distract me. <laughs> all right, so pop quiz number two. What uh, constitution, when we think about this, some people have a lot of air in their system and their vatas, or some people are pitted, they have a lot of fire, you have a lot of fire in your body. If you are a lot of earth, like you don't get off the couch, you love to sit there and eat the ice cream in your elastic pants, you know? All right, so which which kind of body is deep breathing going to be best for? Survey says... All of the above. Choices. Yeah, yeah, all of the above. Whether you're somebody who is on the go, 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 and you need to slow down, deep breathing is going to help you find balance. If you're one of those people that is spinning like Jetta, like, oh, handing the remote to somebody that doesn't even need to drop the TV for crying out loud, you know, and so, um, yeah, any of the ways that you present in the world, if you need energy and you need to get up and get moving and you kick in the pants, you need to breathe. Um, all of the above is the, is the right answer. All right, so let's warm up like the sunshine. So move your, um, I'll move this away for a minute. Okay, we'll move it out. And does anybody like your block? I would please. Okay. All right, put your hands on your heart and feel that breath one more time. Okay, would you like to raise one day? One's good for that one. All right, now feel your heart, uh, feel your hands with your heart. Like, so when you breathe in, you lift that heart a little bit. The shoulders kind of roll back down and where they're supposed to be and not up here whenever you take that big breath in. 
and then what you're going to do next is you're going to breathe it out and let the air go. And then we're going to reach high with our hands. Stretch high, 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 high. And then exhale and bring your palms down to your thigh muscles. Yeah. And then inhale and reach out and find that diagonal. So that sits bones connected to the chair seat. Arms are reaching long. And then you exhale over your lap. And wherever that feels good today. And that's why you got your block. Because sometimes the floor is far away. Right? And sometimes um, if you feel like you can't go through that fold, like if you're dizzy and it's not feeling good, then just rest on your forearms, on your knees, on your thigh bones. Right? Take care of yourself. You know how it feels to be you. Nobody else. So you, you're in charge. You're an active participant in your own rescue. Now, is this stretching our backs? Yeah. How's that feel? It's wonderful. Yes. And then let your head hang here because there's a tendency to look and see what the little lady's doing. I'm not doing anything, I promise. <laughs> well, you just let your neck hang, and your head is going to be the weight of a bowling ball. It's about eight to ten pounds with the noggin you got. And so when you let it just hang, you're letting the little neck bones lengthen too, which is getting back to those jelly filled donuts being plump. And juicy, or what does it say out Krispy Kreme? Hot and ready, or hot now, or what is that? Hot and ready. Hot and ready, Barry. Hot and ready. Thank you, Barry. I didn't know I'd be doing that. All right, one hand in the center of your feet, wherever, or one uh, elbow resting, and then reach the other hand up to the ceiling. It doesn't matter which way you go; you're going both ways. You may can look up to that hand, but your neck may also say, "Oh no, that does not feel good." So look down and just let it be loose. But you're twisting and getting openness in the chest, maybe. Again, we're squeezing like our back, like a like the wash rag. All right, hand that goes high uh, comes low. The hand that goes low goes high. You just twist in your opposite direction. And you may see somebody, so say hello. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you do. <laughs> oh, stretch it out, lengthen as long as you can. I mean, as much stretch and reach as you can. And then let it go. Now, set your feet. Four corners really mashing into the floor. Muscles in the legs are squeezed tight. The muscles in your belly are going to pull up and in. The back and the bone muscles are tight, too, as you breathe in. And lift your arms straight out in front of you and up overhead. So you're protecting the back as you lift. And then exhale, bring palms together, thumbs to the heart. And you have done the sunshine up in the air. Setting and shining on another part of the earth, and then back up again, ready to go. Breath in and out here. Breath in, reach your arms nice and high. Stretch, 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 stretch. Exhale, hands to your lap. Breath in, find that diagonal. Pull the belly muscles up and in. I have a teacher that says POA, POA, and I'm like, what in the world? It's like the kids talking LOL and, and all these letters, like, just talk. I don't understand POA. Pit of the abdomen. Pit of the abdomen. Thank you, sir. All right, exhale and then fold over with it. It's for you. Shake your head. Yes, let it rock in back and forth in the nose. All right, one hand in the center, one hand reaches high. Whichever way you go is good. You're going both ways. Hand that's high comes low. The hand that's low goes high. Breath in as you stretch. Breath out as you come back to the fold. Now set your feet. You're going to take care of your back here. Squeeze in the muscles to the bones of the legs. Squeeze in the belly muscles and then breathe in and reach up, 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 up. That's but hard to do. It is. You doing it, though, girl. All right. And then exhale. Bring your palms together and thumbs to your heart. That's it. You got your sweat yet? You glistening? <laughs> I was somewhere yesterday and that you had that sweat. Oh, Faith. We were at Faith Lutheran Church last night. And Jeannie kidnapped Pauline. Now, not only is she not coming, she is now being like, she's taking away my other people. So when you get your <laughs> nails you done, tomorrow. when you get your nails done, tell her now, there's this one thing to take yourself out of the equation, but you don't be taking your mama. It's all good. She said, I kidnapped mama. We're not done with what we're doing. I won't be, she won't be here tonight. All right, but I can feel that sweat start to roll right here. <laughs> All right, sitting up nice and tall. Now, I'll pull these back in front of you. All right, and we are ready to roll the holy. Oopsie. 
right, so be thinking of the things that you like that we do. So when we design our homework practice today, you find the things that would work for you. Um, and then uh, track your homework practicing because I was going to ask you how much um, you maybe have practiced anything that we've done, anything. Because if you keep tallies, when you come in next time, you get to make a little ticket and we're going to have a prize for drawing. So, you know, all you got to do is practice on one time and get your name in there. But if you do it more, you get more, more chances to win. Okay. All right. So sit up nice and tall. Grab your fingers like you're praying um, hands and then roll them back and forth and back and forth. Ooh. Now, does it hurt so good or does it hurt so bad? Oh, no. <laughs> well, don't do it fast. Do it slow like you're doing and do what you can do. All right. It said to do it 10 times. So, yeah, you do what you can do. So this is going to coordinate and mobilize all your finger and wrist joints, and it's a multi-directional movement that you got going. And then for grins and giggles, if you have done 10, if you, only if you ought to, you're going to reverse it, which is really playing with your brain, right? Mm -hmm. How to do it, the figure eight backwards. Moving at a comfortable speed, little tension as possible in your fingers. So, yeah, so don't squeeze like, you know, white knuckle in it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, just let it be loose. You can. How you doing? You're knocking some rust off. Don't, don't do it. You, you, but you're knocking some rust off. Yeah. Don't don't All right. Now we move to finger push-ups. Bum, bum, bum. These are going to strengthen the muscles in your um and the flex the fingers, increase the range of motion. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to start with your hands flat on the table. You're sitting up nice and tall. You good? You want me to pull up closer? You good? All right. And then you're going to push your fingers into the table, ba -bom, like you just hit that um, on the organ or the piano, that chord, and made that loud, loud sound. Push your fingers, and so that your wrists lift off, keeping your fingers slightly curved. Raise your wrists as far as you can. And then you gather all five fingers towards one another. Oh, flatten it out. And then let your hands be flat on there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we're going to strike a chord. Wonk. Wrist are high. And then pull fingers towards one another. And then let it go. Let it go. So it's almost like a little spider dance, right? Big breath in. Big breath out. Or maybe like an amoeba. <laughs> Big breath in, big breath out. All right, everything they're encouraging you to do 10 times, but today, so we can get a lot of tools in our tool um, uh, box, we probably do things about five times each. So that's about five-ish, all right? And then just feel the uh, the desk, the table area with your hands. Now, feeling the flatness of your hand against it as best you can, y'all, that's a grounding thing, right? So if you're one of those people that's full of a lot of air, like I am, where I'm like, oh, where did I put my car keys? Oh, where have I lost my phone again? You know, like, uh, so that means I probably need to slow down and not try to do as much as my brain is dancing around trying to do. And this is something just as simple as where is my body connecting with the furniture, with the floor, with the, you know, and it slows you down enough so where you won't be like spinning. All right. So now we're ready to do the prayer position. And so we're going to start with our hands together. You join the palms together as high up as you can in the air, breathing, lifting, lifting, strong connection between your palms. Slowly lower them. And then push them down as far as they will go as the palms still are connected together. And that's going to be different for everybody's body. Do you see what I mean? Like some people can go lower with it and some people higher. So push and reach it up. And exhale and let it go. This time when you get to that lowest position, take the fingertips towards your table. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Where is it? Where do you feel it? Which? Where does it wrist? Push? In your wrist. Okay. So we're getting, we're, that's testimony that we're hitting the spot. 
Okay, but just hit it at the right. Don't fram it, but hit it at the right um, amount of effort. So breath in and you go up. So I was telling that, did I send y'all the link about cowboy and octopus last week? I thought I shared that with some people. <laughs> it was a picture book story I shared with little people, but bless um, cowboy. He was like, you know, not maybe all there. Go ahead and fingers forward. The cowboy was having trouble with pronouns because Octopus said, I'm going to make this boat. Fingertips back up and then reach to the ceiling. I'm going to make this boat. And but I can't hit the hammer, you know, hit it with the hammer and hold it. So I'm going to hold it. And then when I nod my head, you hit it. And cowboy says, that sounds low to me. All right, come on back down. Let your fingers go. <laughs> so so Octopus holds the boat together, nods his head, and cowboy frames him in the head, right? Because he said, hit it. And he hit his head. That's why I thought it was kind of crazy. What I for octopus? He asked octopus, "You want me to? You want any more help?" And he said, "Sometimes help from a friend is not the best help." <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> All right, so bring them down one more time, and then fingertips forward. And up. so you can see how, and then let your hands go and just let your hands relax, like on your fingers and just let them, you know, like you're playing the piano, kind of wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Um, you can see how you could do this while you're sitting in um, the stoplight, I mean, or, or somewhere where you're waiting, you know, or somewhere when you're watching TV or something. These are things you could do to take care of your hands and wrists. Okay, now you've got um, your... Uh, um, one of the prophets in the Old Testament, you got a staff, you're going to hold your staff out in front of you. So you're extending from your, now, if this doesn't feel good in the shoulder, Barry, watch your shoulder on this, the shoulder that doesn't feel as good. Um, you extend your right head out in front of you, um, and then you're going to stretch the palm out. Curl your fingers into a loose fist. All right, then curl, use your left hand, the opposite hand, use your opposite hand to curl around the fingers and bring it towards your body. Just, you just gentle curl. And do you feel a stretch in your wrist as you get it, as you curl the fingertips towards you? Mm -hmm. Arms still extended, maybe send arms a little bit more. So the inner elbow is turned toward um, toward the skyish a little bit, and then let it go. All right, come on back down and rest it. I don't know about you, but I feel that in my shoulder too. So go ahead and roll the shoulder up and back and down. Okay, so you're gonna try it on the other side. And the idea is to get a stretch here that we didn't seem to get to, but we'll keep working on it. So we're gonna reach out, palms extended. All right. And then you're gonna make a loose fist. So you're holding that staff. Go ahead and make the water turn from the, um, the river to the blood, right? All right, and then from here, you're gonna take your opposite hand, curl it around and just bring the wrist Try not to bend the elbow this time and see if you feel more of a stretch as you curl the hand towards you. Do you feel it now? You feeling it a little bit in the wrist? All right, and then let it go. All right, wiggle both fingers kind of to open and close if that feels good and relax it. All right, if you got a golfer's elbow there, if you don't need this next one, you got a golfer's elbow? Maybe. <laughs> All right. So this is makes me think of what we did um, when we did our little pushing on the balls last time. All right. So it's the same kind of idea. You're going to take your um, elbows, pull your chair in a little bit. So maybe you can rest your elbow on your um, desk. Okay. Your palms are facing at you. And one at a time, you're going to bend each joint towards the palm. All right. So you're just going to take the finger and bend it down. First, you bend the, the first joint, then you bend the second joint, and then you bend the third joint. So you've got three, yeah, there you go. Okay. Is it already doing that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can use your other hand to help it just to get the bending and the flexion in all the joints, okay? And then you work through each finger. So you're gonna bend at the, where it connects to your hand. 
then the middle joint, and then around. Mm -hmm. Last two. Yep, and so just work through each one at your pace. So last time, uh, Mom and Dad, we did um, we had a little ball. And what we did, I, I actually liked it better than doing it like this with one joint because they're like a toy. I don't say if y'all like a toy. Mm -hmm. So I'll just offer this up. This comes from the um, um, the uh, milk method uh, that we were talking about. And I sent a link about, you know, if you wanted to play more with that. But so that was where you press, and I'm going to have to help myself because my thumb is I'm not happy. All right, so you press down, right? And then you press the tip into it. And you're getting that flexion of those okay. different joints. So you press in like this, and then you press in like this. It's all right. Hold it. Help it with the other hand. Yeah. I think these balls got harder. They're not. They're not hard. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't this hard last week. Where are they? Hard. What happened to them? They were squishier last week. But did we use other balls? These are the squishier balls. Oh, are they? Okay. But they don't feel squishy today. Mm -hmm. All right, so, but you're pressing with the top of your joint and then you're pressing with the flat of the finger. And so, and again, see, you're, when you do that motion, you're getting all those bends in those joints. Is that better? No, still, still struggle. The struggle is real. <laughs> so, you know, chop this one up. Is this one maybe not one we put in our toolbox? You know, it's all good. I do like it though, and you can keep a ball, you know, by your yeah. little place at the TV or in the car. I know I should have both hands on the wheel, but I mean, if I'm at stop sign, I can. I mean, stop light, stop light, stop light. I mean, not to try to do so much when I'm driving. <laughs> All right, so you try that with both hands, and like I say, I'll give you the um the paperwork I'll give you. Would you prefer a paper copy or like me just to send you the pictures with the um email? Email for us. Email for you. Would you like a paper copy? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. awesome. Then I don't have to print. Mm -hmm. you, you'll do that. Okay. Because you can, I know y'all will print what you want to print. So that's good. Got our printer working. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. The next one is going to be a go out in the hallway one. Um, and so let's do, uh, it's going to be one to stretch our wrists and fingers and biceps and all that good stuff. So come on out here and we'll also work on our um, upper body strength. So, okay, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. Oh, no, I tell you what, we'll take you with us. <laughs> all right. Whoops. Maybe not. Okay. What's the camera? You know, actually. Okay. Are you still there? I think we're still there. Okay. I think I don't see anything because I, my camera doesn't work on here. Okay. All right. So we're out in the hall and it may or may not be, you may not can see anything if I don't have the camera. Okay. So we're going to take our hand to the wall, everybody. All right. So here's the wall. All right. Everybody's got your hand and then watch your neighbors so that you don't, I'm going to go put her back. I don't think you can see what we're doing out there. So I'll just send you a picture. I'm so sorry, my camera died on the um the computer, so um it's uh not working, but I'm gonna pull that camera back. Yeah. And I think maybe um you can see. So we are doing this move right here next. We're pressing it to the wall, and then we're going to do and then we're going to do um the push-up on the wall and the wall plank. All right, so go ahead and take some time to do that. Okay. All right, so you stand with your uh, body against the wall about 18 inches away. You got your hand on the wall, and your index finger is pointing upward on this flat. Yeah? All right, you take a breath so that you can be nice and tall, and then you're going to slide the opposite shoulder blade towards the spine. So this one, all right, is going to slide towards it. And then you're going to just gently start to take your gypsy toes and move around in a circle as you keep this against the wall. Now press into the wall. And where do you feel it? You feel it? Yeah. Well, when you feel it south, I mean, you find the place to move it and then the, let you feel the work and then don't go farther. All right, stop when you feel that good stretch in the palm and across your upper chest and shoulder. For more stretch, you can straighten the elbow, but you can also keep a little bend in the elbow. 
Then you're gonna hold that for a few breaths before you try it on the opposite side. All right, when you get ready to move it, you're going to remove your hand from the wall, stay with your feet the way they are, and hold your hand in that shape. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. Isn't that safe, honey? It's not even a very big old rocket science kind of thing, but it's effective. <laughs> Well, okay. Yeah, everybody turn yourself around. Okay, all right, we're loving. Where can we sit? Yo, yeah, great idea. Everybody just move to the other side and then you can still see. Brilliant school teacher versus me. You could be in a um, big thing, okay? So, oh, okay. Is that what you think the other way is for? Okay, is that right? Yeah. Okay, sure. All right, so I'm going to be right here. Okay, so you got your hand on the wall. Feel it flat on the wall, yes? All right, now remember, you can keep it bent a little bit to not be as, as um, uh, potent. <laughs> Can't find the right words. All right, so, so what you want to do is you're going to press into the wall. The index finger is still nice and tall. Everything is flat against the wall, and you're just going to, this opposite shoulder blade is pulled in. Yeah, so it's not out there. It's pulled in so that you can then try to move around wherever it is for you. But you keep pressing into the wall, but you start to feel that stretch across your chest, your shoulder, and you feel it in the palm as well. And you hold it for a few breaths. But don't know. Oh, the pain, out of the pain. And after you hold it for a few breaths, then remember you're going to take it off the wall and then you're going to keep pressing into the space there. But there's no, you don't have the wall anymore. You're just opening the hand and you count for five, two, four, five. <laughs> All right. And then you let it in. All right. And now I have to get All right. And then the next one, as we found before, was where we found the wall with both hands and you walk your feet back. So this is called wall plank. So wall plank is um, like the top of the push-up except you're not on the floor. And so you're pushing strongly through the hands and then now engage all the muscles in the belly and the uh, back and the body, your legs, everything strong. And so you're, sim you're simulating that move of when you would push your body weight off the floor and now you're pushing it off the wall. You feel the work? Now, and then if you want to do um, rapid bus a little farther down the road, you can take your elbows and let them drop towards the wall and actually work a push up. But you don't have to. That's just an option if you want to get a little more booty out of it. All right. And again, you find that edge for you. If it's probably too big to hold up the wall today, then that's good enough. Then you're going to walk your hands down the wall, and as you do, you're going to stretch your hips back. You're going to keep your legs long and your back long, and this is going to be a, what's called the wall dog. So there's a move in yoga called downward facing dog, and what you're doing now is you are pushing back and creating that shape. It's also called the kitchen sink stretch, and it stretches out legs and your back and shoulders. Try to keep your shoulders relaxed, loose. How's that feel? All right, now walk your hands up to where you can get off the wall, and then come on back and have a seat. And or should we try our treat pose before we sit down? We should, yeah, once we sit down, we want to be able to just sit down, but they All right, let's try our treat pose. All right, we're back. <laughs> what did she do? Nothing. All right, she <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's do um the tree pose. So we're gonna you can you can sit down the tree. It's all good. Oh yeah. Um, so we're gonna stand up with one hand on the back of the chair or both hands on the back of the chair. But the idea with tree is you've got one foot that you grow roots into the floor with. <laughs> Right, and then the other foot comes on top like a you know, kickstand on a bike or um, 
Uh, you can do your, yeah, or you can come up the leg. And Jennifer, I'm just noticing that I've got your box in today. The little lady has all these toys. All right, and then you find that thing that's not moving, and you really give that your focus, right? You can have your branches keep um, hanging on to the chair, or you can lift branches high. Or your branches fall off. Your branches can fall off. You can have the wind blowing through your branches, too. I can't do that. I, yeah, I got no balance. Um, uh, thank you. I have no balance either. So the deal oh, with balance, no yeah, so the deal with balance, go ahead and relax everything and put the feet side by side and just take a notice of how the one that was balanced, the standing leg versus the one that was up, what does it feel like, you know, between the two legs. The deal with balance, it really depends on how much you rested last night too and how much um, water you drank today, you know, so it's a, it is an inconsistent thing, you know, it doesn't, it, it's not exactly always like I don't I can't do it as much as well you know I'm I didn't I tossed and turned all night or I haven't drank enough water today let me get our show all right here we go all right so we're going to take the opposite foot is now going to be your base so the leg that was up and I talked way too long do you remember which one you did yeah. okay because <laughs> I don't always remember when I talked too long all right heel you're going to heel on top you're going to kick stand it up to the side you're going to climb up the leg or you can go wherever it is you want to go are you sure i think i did this wrong there you go. <laughs> i do it opposite okay so you think it's right <laughs> pull that belly in every time you wobble relax your shoulders don't let them eat up space to your ears and then branches like i say you're welcome to hang on to the chair Surfing. <laughs> yeah. He's got the wind blowing through his branches. Okay. All right, that branch is that are high come low, the leg that's up comes down as gracefully as you can. All right, let's do something else was from your home practice. What else did you do when you were standing up? Did you do uh, Warrior One or Crescent on y'all's? Oh, remember? We did Crescent. Crescent. Okay, so let's do crescent lunge. So you turn your chair so that you can work in a space that you have today where we can come up further if, if I got you two boxed in. But your or, uh, the crescent lunge is going to be one foot forward. Knee is going to go over the ankle. And then the back leg is going to stretch back and you're going to bend those toes. All right, and you can lengthen through that leg or it can be more bent. Yeah. Now, again, you're hanging on to the back of the chair or you're hanging on to your heart, or a combination of, or you can lift arms up. And some of these things that were we did for homework and stuff were related to our hips and our, um, uh, we did our SI joint and our uh, lumbar spine. And, and I told you I'd have you a list ready and I didn't get it done, but we'll get that to you of all the things. All right, there you go. And then let it go. Bring the feet side by side. And again, feel what it felt like to have one working in the way it was. Can you feel the difference? That's amazing. Like, it is something you probably never, like, stop to say, huh, that's how that affected me today. All right, the leg that back becomes the leg forward. You bend it over the knee. All right. And then branches of it, well, not branches because they're not a tree now, but your crescent lunge our arms can be high. They can be like goalposts if you're getting ready for college football. Whoop, whoop. Can y'all believe it's August? Next week is August. Yes. Not yet, July. Yeah, some people have to celebrate anniversary. 57 years worth of fun. 58. Oh, I'll be 57 this year. <laughs> we got a year on you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I thought all year I was 57 anyway. What in the world? I can't keep up. All right. And then so relax your arms and then the back leg can come in. Now this time put those feet side by side. I forgot to cue that with the tree. But what does it feel like now after both legs got a chance to do the work? Better. Yeah. Better as in more balance. you feel more balanced. How about that? And you may or may not. And that's okay. Whatever your answer is, it doesn't have to be Lisa's answer. Right. But sometimes you do notice like, huh. Oh, I feel that working. Yeah, it did straighten me out a little bit. 
All right. So now we'll come down and now we'll do pressure cooker. That's one we've been doing. Um, so we'll put your chair back and have a seat in your chair. There you go, Lisa. You want to teach it? You got it. <laughs> that one I can do without looking. You know? Yay. All right. So that's the one where you feel your feet connect with the floor. And um, you're going to lean over. Your hands are going to be on the outsides of your lower legs. And you're going to um, press in to the lower legs as your legs push out into your hands. And you create the crop of uh, Instapot, right? The heat. Whoa! Everything's working. Pressure cooker was good for your low back. It was good for your um, um, uh, SI joint. It was good for your hips. It's been with us ever since we got started at set feet and ankles. We didn't use it with feet and ankles. All right, let it go. And then what was our favorite transition move? The windshield wash. Yeah, to let the hips go back and forth, back and forth. All right, pop quiz. If you create heat in your body when you do pressure cooker, would it be helpful for, true or false, would it be helpful for the person that likes to sit on the couch and doesn't have any heat in their body? They don't, they eat ice cream and they like elastic pants. It, would it be helpful? Everybody says, Yes. Yes, it would, because it would create some fire in their system. They need a little, they need to burn it off a little bit. They need some get up and go. They have no get up and go. They got a lot of, you know, to sit in there. So, yeah, it creates heat. All right, pull your tray, tray up with no snacks, Barry. Still no snacks. <laughs> yeah, good. You said you didn't have snacks. Yeah, I pulled these out, y'all, last week, and Barry was like, hey. TV trays, we have snacks. <laughs> He's ready. He's got the big TV. He's all ready to put on the baby Griffin show and go to it. All right. This is called digital extension, and this is going to help us to have uh, work on straightening or work into some straightening of fingers. So you're going to relax. You can put your elbows on your um, desk again, um, and you're going to hold your right index finger with the left hand. You're going to kind of prop the elbow. Uh, wrist on the table, your uh, uh, forearm on the table, and you're just going to gently grab this index finger and pull it slightly back to your um, forearm. Now, can you feel that stretch? Is it too much? Mm -hmm. All right, and then you're going to do the second finger. And you can do it for as many like seconds as you want to. They recommend 10 seconds. Uh, we're going on to the ring finger. Or you can count instead of seconds. You can count like breaths. Like I'll hold it for two breaths or three breaths or five or 10, whatever feels good. And then grab your pinky. And the fingers are long as you do this and they're stretching back. You okay over there? Yeah. All right. And then you're going to take the hand underneath the thumb and you're just going to pull back on the thumb towards the body. How's that? Feel it? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to hold the hand out flat and you're going to gently pull it down. So a little bit different angle on the dangle with your thumb. Your thumb being able to go all lots of different ways, they give you two different ways to stretch it. Now I'm so excited. This weekend I go up to um, Plemons to do a uh, training for yoga therapy on what we're talking about today. So Next week, I'll straighten out all the things I didn't teach you. Why? <laughs> um, but I've got three more trainings. So this training coming up, relax that hand. Take your hands on your desk. Feel what it feels like to be you in both hands. And then start with your other hand. Just gently pulling back a finger. Um, and then the next module is in September. It's a Zoom module. They decided not to be in person, and it's mental health. I'm real excited about that one since that's kind of my... um 
compassion. I hope you come back well trained for that. Yes, <laughs> and we've done trauma informed yoga. Yeah. Um, we've done anxiety and um, depression. So I'm not real sure what mental health module is going to be about, but I'm that yeah, that's going to be a favorite. And then the next one is the last one that they do is endocrine system. So that's like diabetes and anything related to the Wi-Fi going haywire in your body. Endocrine system is the only system. Go ahead and relax your index finger and use your second finger. It, oh, good, good. Go on to the next one. The endocrine system is the, the system that doesn't have a network. Respiratory has a network, right? Circulatory has a network. Everything's got a network to set your endocrine system, and that works on Wi-Fi. That's hormones going from one spot to another spot in your body. I'm like, yeah, ring fingerish. So that's the last module. So I came in at module five. So I'm doing modules one, two, three, and four this year, the third year of the program. And it's so like, oh, yeah, I can see why you started with this. <laughs> Taking a lot of, you know, it's kind of like you built the skyscraper from the top, you know, the middle up to the top, and now I'm going back to put the foundation down. All right, go ahead and do your clanky or what you haven't done. If you're ready to do your thumbs, go for your thumbs. Again, you can see how these would be easy to incorporate with a yeah. thumb yeah. added to the day. And then now we're going to do the thumb on the full weight. First, you um, <laughs> are going to have the full back. And then after you pull it back, we're going to have it more flat and pull it kind of down and back. All right. There are a couple more things that they suggest, but I will just give you those options um, uh, to do because we're going to do some resting and then design our homework practice for the day. All right, so your homework practice can be anything we've ever talked about or anything you like. Um, breathing, um, things to find balance when you're bouncing off the walls or any of the dosha kind of things or any of the hands and wrists or anything that you remember from um, working together. Okay, so you're going to sit as comfortably as you can in your chair. And it's time for Latin or Cloth. Yeah. And then I think. That's my favorite part. Pops never had a lavender. A lavender cloth. And so you can oh. put it on your neck. You can put it oh, on your. I feel so good. On your wrist. Oh, you can. Cold. Oh. It's too much. Oh, I'm cold. So you don't have to use it. You can put it on your eyeballs. If you sweat it a lot, it would feel better. Maybe. Mm -hmm. You don't have to use it. We don't need it's it. not a must. It's, it, it's okay. We don't need you don't need it. Excuse me. You're a visible man. I'm like going to. Right. Is that air too much blowing on you too? Keep it about sixty degrees. Yeah, I've never noticed it was cold in there. <laughs> well, it depends on which one you go to, I guess. You ought to come to church here. We'll freeze to death. You will. Yeah. Um, I I can't. No, I'll believe our church as y'all be. I don't know. Barry wears a coat. I mean, not. I do. Not, I have a blanket and a yeah. jacket. I keep fleece in the car. When they had the air broke the other day, I, that was okay. <laughs> It was. Everybody was hot, and I'm like, that's so pretty. Uh, um, pro tip: Don't sit in front of that part of the room next time if you're if you get cold because that thing it blows right this way. So if you like to feel cold air, it's a good sit spot. But get over there more like next to Lisa. <laughs> All right. So you're to imagine that you have four pebbles today that you're gonna pick up like those. Like the play doh, like that we held today, or like the um, uh, uh, balls that we used last time, and a little bit this time. But you're gonna have these four rocks. So go ahead and imagine four pebbles. You could pick them up on the beach or any one of your adventures or in your backyard. Um, they could be any shape or any texture or any color that you would like. But this meditation or this uh, opportunity to be still and quiet is called a handful of quiet. 
a handful of quiet. And you use four pebbles. And in real life, uh, in a perfect world, everybody would have four pebbles right in front of them. But I'll invite you to just collect four rocks on your own um, to keep for your tools if you like this um, idea. So in your imagination, you'll pick up the very first rock and admire it. And you're going to feel the texture of it, all the crevices and um, bumps and lumps or the smoothness of it. Notice the color. And I want you to think of a flower. This first rock in the handful of quiet meditation represents freshness and beauty like a bloom of a flower. So you're holding on to this rock, thinking about a flower. And you can pick your favorite color flower. You can enjoy it whatever time of year it blooms. But what about being fresh and being open to new ideas and being curious and being youthful in the sense of young people? Um, that's why God said, you know, come to me like a little child, right? You're trusting and you're open and you're wondering. So think about the flower. Now put that rock down in your mind and let it rest there on your little desk on your TV tray with no snacks. And then pick up your second rock in your mind. And again, get acquainted with it. What does it feel like? How heavy is it? What's the color? Are there any sharp points or it's a pretty smooth? Is it an old rock or a young rock? Like is it an Appalachian mountain rock or is it a Rocky Mountain rock? And think mountain as you hold this rock, a mountain that is strong and solid and stable, not going anywhere. And think about your steadiness, your stability, your strength and dependability. You are a rock. I wore my you got this shirt today because I was thinking about God's got you and say you got this. Mountain. Strong and stable and the changes that it experiences is just little tiny changes over long, long, long periods of time. So you can count on your mountain. You can count on your strength. All right, put that rock down in your mind's eye. And now you pick up your third rock and get acquainted with it. You know the drill now. You rub it in your hands and feel the texture and notice the colors. And this third rock is going to be water. Now, we're going to be in a lake that the water is still and reflecting all around it. So this water that we're using this third rock for is about looking at the truth. So... You have your way of looking through your own eyes, but it may or may not be what's really out there. It may be that you're distorted or your 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 vision is a little fuzzy because of your experiences and your perceptions. But but what if you could just see it as it truly is? What if it was reflecting the truth? And so this is like a perfect mirror, the still water reflecting all around exactly as it is. No misconceptions, no distortions. All right, go ahead and put that third rock down. 
and remind yourself the first drop represented freshness. We were looking at the flower. We were looking at blooming for today, being in the moment and being curious and wondering. The second rock represented strength and dependability and stability and steadfastness, and that was the mountain. And the third rock represented the stillness and the truth that uh, the water can reflect what is as it is. And no th thought distortion, no misconceptions or misunderstandings. And so pick up the final rock. Notice if it feels lighter, heavier than the others. What's its color? What's its shape? Notice the texture. Notice the temperature. And this last one represents space. Space as in you've got enough space to do the things you like to do the way you like to do them. This last rock represents freedom and space. There's a phrase in yoga, loka, lokhi samasta, suki no bhavantu, loka samasta, suki no bhavantu. And it means may all beings everywhere have good space. What if people weren't crowded and pinched and crimped up? What if they had enough space, enough freedom to be who they need to be. To be the child of God that they are uniquely designed to be in the world. Put that last rock down, and you've got four pebbles. Four pebbles to remember. A flower, a mountain, water, and space. A flower, a mountain, water, and space. Freshness, openness, strength, stability, steadfastness, truth, and freedom. Available to you as a handful of quiet. He is my rock. My sword, my shield, he's my hub in the middle of the wheel. He's my lily of the valley, he's my bright and shining star. It makes no difference what you say, I'll get on my knees and pray. I'll be praying till the day my Jesus comes. Take a deep breath in and begin to invite some small movement back into your body. You can wiggle fingers, you can stretch overhead. Whatever feels good is the right choice. Okie dokie, so it's homework time. <laughs> All right, so, and I'll be glad to write because I know sometimes it's hard to write. Or you're welcome to put it on your tablet. You can design a homework plan together with someone you love, or um, you can do it on your own. Would you like to do yours on tablet, or do you want to do yours together? All right, if you tell me what you like. Do okay. So let's make one up together. All right. So who's like something they learned today? Who would you like to name? Yes. Just stretch your fingers. Ball was there anything you like that you learned? Like maybe not. You like the stretching, the stretching, the stretching, the stretching fingers back? And the wrist. Okay. All right. So let's write that down. So we that was called wrist. digital extension. Digital. All right. Digital extension was stretching fingers. I can't spell. I use my first grade handwriting. <laughs> 
All right, that was stretching fingers. <laughs> Is any way it might stretch the arm legs out of the fingers? Well, we talked about that before. I don't think we'll get rid of old Arthur, but we're definitely well, going to get along with him in a better way. Along with him. Yeah. What do you call the with the wall? It's not down dog. What wall dog? Wall dog. Yeah, yeah. So wall dog was the thing where you do like that, like this. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. That's good. All right. Wall dog is good. What else? I'll put you that person again. The um, playing with the clay. Okay. That helps flex and stuff. Mm -hmm. So motion is the lotion. So your inclination, and I talked to the, um, I went to the new doctor. I think I forgot to ask about partial knee replacement. I well, talked about full knee partial knee replacement. I talked to him about full, but we didn't talk about partial. And I and I, as soon as I got in my car and was driving home, I said, Jennifer said to ask about that. And I didn't have it because I wanted to know. But this guy was good, and I feel like I could maybe my chart message him, you know, and mm -hmm. ask him. But he said, when you have arthritis, what some people do is like when their car is not working really well, you can't park the car in the garage. And if you park the car in the garage, you're not going to have any car trouble, right? So you can stop moving <laughs> and you're not going to feel arthritis, right? If, if you don't move. But in the long run, you don't have a car. You can't get to where you're going. It's not really a great choice. But some people with arthritis choose to do that. Yeah. His idea was to keep using the car as long as you can use the car, which he used a cortisone shot in my knee, you know, to help me keep giving along with mine. But but he's saying keep moving as long as you can move and then they can do a replacement. But you, the movement in yoga, they'll tell you what we said before. The motion is lotion. The motion is lotion. Does everybody have three things down? Yeah. All right. What about a breathing pattern that you liked? Or um, like in the horsey lips, can you breathe like the horse or can you breathe like the ocean? <sighs> or did anybody like the rock idea that you want to think about that and develop that for yourself? Um, what about the thing with the joints and squishing with the ball? Um, all right, and then think about something from another time. Anything from another lesson that you appreciated, like windshield wiper legs, windshield, windshield wiper legs, um, or a pressure cooker. That seems to be one that yeah, we've used a lot. Uh, crescent pose or warrior um, um, uh, one, warrior three, tree pose that are if you wanted to work on balance. So you only need about three things down because that's enough things to try to say I'm going to do. Try to do it at least one time during the week, right? Maybe even two times. Maybe if you do it every time you're brewing your coffee. I said that to you. Um, who was it? Oh, Sue Freeman last night at Faith Bellish, at Faith, Faith uh, their chair yoga class. She said, you think we got all the time in the world? I guess she's retired, though, isn't she? Yeah, but she volunteers a lot. A lot. But I said, you know, while your coffee's brewing, you can, you know, do your wall stretch, you know, or something. You think I got all the time in the world in the morning? But I was trying to say, tie it to a habit like bundle, like if you brush your teeth, then say you're going to do the chair pose for three breaths after you brush your teeth. Like It's like something that you know you're going to do every day, so you're going to tie the um, habit to it or the the, the expectation. You well, got say, why are you waiting? Why are you waiting for something? You can stretch fingers. You don't want to waste any time. No, you don't want to waste any time. <laughs> Excuse me, right there too. Yeah, I know, right. Yeah, like that. Streamline. Okay, and then if you need some tickets for doing your um, yoga last week, let me know. So we'll start the drawing today. Um, or, um what we're earning the drawing? I got a bucket here somewhere. Here it is. Oh. All right. So you need some tickets, Miss Ben Barry. Did y'all get any work done this week? I did the windshield wiper. Well, there you said. go. You write your name on there. I was stressed out watching Fox News. Look, hey, so, hey, oh, well, I'll do it. Yeah. 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 Any, did you do work any you this week? Yep. But you, did you do anything? No. Or, yeah. Probably not. Right. Okay. Did you do anything? Mm -hmm. okay. You breathe? Did you breathe? I breathe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, we'll put a JP on it. Where's the... Um, you got to give me a picture of the cloths. Okay. Where is the light of the car? Okay.
I'm going to Clemson this weekend for a barbershop workshop, and that's what they nailed me on last time. Was they said I didn't breathe not but breathing. You suppose, you, if your stomach don't rise, yeah. so you're not breathing. Right. There you go. So you lay on the floor, all right, when you're in the bed, roll over, and you breathe in, and you'll feel the stomach. If you can't find it when you're sitting up, and the other thing to do is to breathe like a dog on a hot summer day. You'll you'll find the diaphragm, even if you have a lot of fluff like me. You'll find it. It's there, all right? And then that is the basement for all the breathing. So that's why you want to breathe all the way down, you know, to that part of you. You want to use everything I gave you. It's the biggest you know, muscle. I always it's thought the biggest muscle in your body. It's bigger than your like lungs. The military, you know, you breathe with your chest. Yes. And you, yes. you that's the first thing she asked yes. me. She said, you're military. Exactly, like exactly. Yeah. yeah. She said, we you talked breathe about that. in your chest. You don't breathe here, you breathe. Your chest breathe, yeah. We talked about that in, in our breathing classes, that the military, um, you have to unlearn. Yep. You've got this way of thinking, and you got to unlearn it. Yeah. That's so cool. All right. All right, anything else for the benefit of the group? All right, we'll see y'all later. We had fun.